there's been some updates regarding the Yuri and Riley situation, right? Here's the update regarding the Yuri and Riley situation. There's been a few updates here to kind of give you guys so you can see Wagwan when it comes to these very toxic individuals, right? Yeah. Let's actually get this up in here so you can see it. Bear with me a second as I get up on here. So number one, this person made this excellent meme about it, which is fucking amazing, right? This meme, break up and move on, stay in a toxic relationship. I think this meme is perfect because it represents, I think, what's that thing called? It's called a battered wife syndrome, right? That's, I think that's what it's called, right? Let me see if I can load it up on here. Is it battered? There we go, battered wife syndrome. Battered wife syndrome, also known as battered person syndrome, can be a product of long-term domestic abuse. Battered woman syndrome is considered a subcategory of post-traumatic stress disorder. Oh, is it? It's a form of PTSD. I had no idea. People living with battered women um, syndrome may feel helpless. So people are suggesting that Riley has battered wife syndrome. Why do they suggest that? They're suggesting that Riley may have this particular syndrome here, right? BWS, because of this particular clip I'm going to play you, which says Riley is upset about all the DMs she's getting from people concerned about her. She says people need to stop bothering her and Yuri. So you've seen all the clips I've shown you. You've seen Yuri being kind of abusive, being a, just being a cunt. Let's not even use like hot words to make him look super guilty. Just being a bit of a cunt. You see all those clips of him being a cunt. Um, you see them arguing all the time when I play some clips on here. Um, you s recently, she kind of broke up with him, allegedly went to get a hotel, which I think is their threat. I think they do it all the time. Like, you know, every, every couple has their like threat, their thing they say. I think the thing that they say to threaten each other, like it's serious. I'm going to get a hotel. So allegedly she went to go get a hotel. She, come, she came back, of course. I think the whole packing thing was a sign as well. Oh, I'm angry. So she was packing like she was going to a hotel room, but obviously she stayed um, and they're back together again. So you've seen all the evidence. There's recent clip again of, of her in the car and she's crying because, um, you know, Yuri is making her feel bad because she, you know, did something wrong. I think she, was I think she nearly ran over somebody. So that's why she pulls this face that everybody's kind of laughing at, right? This face that she makes here. So you've seen a lot of evidence to show that, you know, Yuri is maybe a little bit abusive, maybe not the best boyfriend, whatever. And everybody's, I think, is right, right to be concerned for her. But listen to Riley and how she's processing this. It's fucking insane, but it's really interesting because, again, proof to me, like I've always said, that these people are horrible, but also perfect for each other. Really perfect for each other, in my personal opinion. So don't be out there trying to white knight for her or trying to paint him out to be a monster. They're both equally as bad as each other. People are just giving Riley less of a bad time because she's hot, allegedly to some people, right? They deem her to be hot. But I think if you put that to one side and you put your, you know, your first glasses to one side, you forget about the yat and all that malarkey and just look at it for what it is. They're both as bad as each other. They're not, no one's worse than the other. They're both as bad as each other. That, that's my opinion anyway. Let me play the clip. Taking the time. The thing. Like, yeah. At least come through the stream and like you can actually see what happened. You know that shit got resolved in two minutes. Like I hate the out of context shit. And it's like, bro, like, yeah, you have to have nothing going on in your life to like, go to the dms be like oh my god you should uh do this you should do that this is a terrible what do you who are you who are you to who tell me this you? yeah who are you you're no one to tell me this that's like the number one thing i can understand it's like stop bothering us imagine them saying stop bothering us imagine stop bothering us no bitches you're bothering us with your fucking domestic disputes every other day that kind of stuff to put it online not to be that guy not to sound bitch made but it's kind of traumatic for some people to constantly be seeing people arguing and fighting and stuff online it's not really comforting it's not nice it doesn't make you feel good you're not gonna watch it like i like i'm a bit of a psycho I'm watching this stuff for pure entertainment. I could give two fucks about these two people. If they both f fell off a hotel balcony somewhere, I wouldn't bat an eyelid. Yeah, I wouldn't actually care. If Yuri got run over by an electric scooter and he flipping hit his head on the curb and he happened to be in a coma for 17 hours and then passed away, I wouldn't care. So I don't really care about these people one bit. But I know there are some people out there who probably, when they see stuff like this, it does give them a form of PTSD. 
as this battered wife syndrome stuff does. It probably does remind them of maybe a, a family member, maybe a friend who went through a similar situation. So it can be quite traumatic for people to see somebody get what they deem to be abused online and convince themselves they're not getting abused or it being a shitty situation and then try and gaslight the public who haven't asked to be subjected to this. They're the ones that just keep seeing these guys arguing. It's like, why don't you guys stop arguing and stop acting like children and maybe grow up a little bit or realize, you know, what you have with each other, which is great, or break up and move on. But allow gaslighting people who have actual concerns for you and are just trying to help you out, who are trying to be good people, trying to be good Samaritans. Now you're trying to make them feel bad because they, what, DM'd you and said, hey, be mindful of this because it's a sign for them that maybe, you know, because some people don't see it until it's too late. Maybe this stuff has happened because, again, I don't, I don't buy it. <clears throat> That this is going to end in tragedy i know some people do i remember i think i am sin actually <clears throat> left a comment on one of my clips about that about how she's worried it might end up bad i don't think it's going to get that bad um i don't think yuri has it in him to do anything really physical really fatal in that regard he's a bit of a pussy i don't think he actually has it in him but but if it did there's nothing you can do to stop it unfortunately i don't know about you guys but every friend that i've had who's been in a bad relationship there's no way you can convince them they're in a bad relationship. They have to go through it and you just have to pick up the pieces as a friend or as a family member. There's nothing you can do. You can't prevent them from going through the heartache. You can't prevent them from getting abused. You can't pre pre prevent them from getting hurt. You can't prevent anything. You just have to be there to pick up the pieces or have be a shoulder to cry on or whatever. You can't do anything else. You just have to go through it. And it's really sad because sometimes, you know, the end result is fatal sometimes. But it's the nature of the beast. I can't remember one time where it's well, it's like it's like trying to convince somebody that's fat to go on a diet. It doesn't work. Yes, you can fat shame somebody, but it's only until they decide. As an ex recovering quote unquote fatty myself, I know it's only until you decide you want to make a change that's when it changes. Yes, people can take the piss out of you, call you a lard ass, whatever, make the dee 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 sound like you're reversing every time you walk into a room. Right? Everyone can do whatever they want to do. But until you decide to put down the croissant, nothing changes. Same thing goes for a bad relationship. Until you decide to leave, nothing changes. So everybody writing them fucking essays and shit, you're wasting your time. I know you're, you know, it's coming from a good place. You're wasting your time. And even if you weren't, look at how they're spitting in your face. You're actually concerned in a genuine way. Look at how they're spitting in your face. They're telling you, leave us alone, mind your business. One more time. Taking the time. The thing. Like, yeah. At least come through the stream and like you can actually see what happened. You know that shit got resolved in two minutes. Like I hate that it's out of context shit. And it's like, bro, like yeah, you have to have nothing going on in your life to like go to the DMs, be like, oh my god, you should uh, do this, you should do that. This is a terrible. What do you? Who are you? Who are you to who tell me this? You? Yeah, who are you? You're no one to tell me this. That's like the number one thing I can understand. Hey, yo, big up Austin Casey in the chat. Well, go on. Yeah, I went through the same thing. Exactly. That's perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect example. I went through exactly the same thing when I was in like college or something. And let's say, yeah, I legit saw a homie um, girlfriend out with another guy. When I told him, he got mad at me. I've It's happened to me. And I, and I lost a friend of that. A really good friend. I lost a friend off the back of that. Over getting involved in that kind of scenario. And I learned my lesson. Never again. Never, ever again. Because most of the time, he knew anyway. He just didn't want to realize it. He didn't want to acknowledge it. He didn't want to be reminded of it. You remind him of it. It almost makes him feel ashamed. It's almost like it's equivalent kind of to lending money to a friend. You lend money to a friend and in some, it doesn't happen all the time. In some cases, you lend money to a friend, you help them out. Oh my God, thank you so much. When they get paid, they pay you back and it's like everything's Gucci. Sometimes you lend money to a friend and they end up despising you. They end up hating you because they were in a position where you had to help them even though you don't care even though you don't give a fuck and you'd give them your last fucking shirt off your back they kind of take it a little bit like oh now he's got one up on me now he thinks he's better like it's all this nonsense that's going on in their head internal narrative so that's why personally unless you know that <clears throat> unless you some friends you have relationships with i know there's some people that i know like my friend bobby for instance like we can be brutally honest to each other there's no filter and nothing's received badly. If it is received badly, we can pull each other aside and kind of have a chat. 
but some people you just can't have that conversation with. You have to kind of treat them with kid gloves. You have to walk on eggshells with them. You just have to, because if you don't, it could end up fucking up your relationship with them, which is obviously not fair because you're not fucking involved in this. Why why ruin your relationship just because you want to be a good Samaritan? It makes fucking no sense, especially when they end up spitting in your face about it. But hey, what can you do? It's like, stop bothering us. Stop bothering us, you know? You're bothering us, bro. Fighting on streaming. I, I see people in weird relationships. Do you think I'm going to be fucking telling them how my personal... You want, I won't even tell opinion? them, I won't even tell, like, my close friends, like, of, like, if I think something strange about the relationship, I'm not going to tell them, like, hey... This is what you mean. Something, no, no, something strange about a relationship is maybe the guy living off the girl, right? Something strange about a relationship is maybe the guy not wanting to talk on the phone. Something strange about a relationship is maybe the guy always wanting to be by himself. Maybe the little strange things. What you guys are doing isn't a strange thing. It's a concerning thing. You argue every... Their streams anywhere are quite boring. I'm not going to lie. So the people out there that are clipping the, the, the clips of them arguing, you guys, I salute you. I bow to you. You guys are doing us a, a service because I've tried to watch some of the live streams and they're incredibly boring. They do nothing. They just, you know, they're on their phones. She's sleeping. He's sleeping. They're in the bathroom. It's just fucking boring. They don't do nothing anyway. So apart from just chilling, the only other thing they seem to do, they, they're not even affectionate. They're not even that affectionate on camera. Yeah, I'm not expecting them to fuck or anything, but they're not even that affectionate. The only thing they do when they're not chilling and eating is fucking arguing. <laughs> that's the only thing you see them do on stream if they're not chilling sleeping or eating they're arguing that's all they do so it's not like they like do weird things no you guys do concerning things because the time that you have available especially at their age especially at their state especially doing what he's doing now he's got what like 1500 something subs right 499 that's like seven grand a month you're making you're doing this thing where you could go around the u.s and hang out with your girl and it should be such a lovely romantic adventure you're driving from state to state with your chick you're having to stay in different airbnbs you're streaming it all it should be fucking fun meeting random people, drinking on camera, getting your subs up, duh, 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 duh. instead, we're being subjected to some, some horrible, horrible fucking domestic dispute thing every other day. <clears throat> so it's more than just a weird thing. It's a concerning thing, motherfuckers. You shouldn't do that to yeah. your girl. Like, what the... F Who am I to... Yeah, yeah, like, to... No. It's your personal It's like, so, like I said, people... Uh, DB about it, I said... You're allowed, I think... You, have you heard that saying that you shouldn't tell people how to how to raise their kids? True, but you can have an opinion on it. You shouldn't tell somebody how to raise their kids. I agree, but you can have an opinion on it. And most people's opinion, myself included, is that their relationship fucking stinks, especially on camera. Maybe it's good behind the scenes, but they're fucking awful to each other. He's a shitty boyfriend. She's a shitty girlfriend. <clears throat> they can't seem to get away from each other. Like, even though it's looking bad, they seem to do more bad things than good things together. It's horrendous. If somebody, if, I hope somebody would t put a tally up. Somebody could put like a pie chart together. Outside of the times that they're sleeping and eating or something, what what percentage of the, of the time is spent arguing? And I bet you it'd be concerning, concerningly high, the amount of interactions they have that are just arguments. People with no emotion do the most. <laughs> <laughs> it's just insane. Like, wait, as soon as you went to the shower, don't look at the Reddit. It's so bad. I don't look at the Reddit. Yeah, I don't care. We haven't looked at the Reddit in so long. For sure, 100% this whole, this whole stream. And guess what? We've had an amazing, cool past 22 days of experience. Can you imagine? Can you imagine how much better their relationship would be if they tried to love each other instead of trying to communicate their love through the camera? <clears throat> instead of trying to convince the world that they're in the best relationship ever, could you imagine if they just focused on like loving each other? Could you imagine if they just focused on like taking care of each other, on lifting each other up, on being there for each other? On like imagine, and the camera's there, but <clears throat> you don't try to communicate through it. It's so fucking weird good times and all types of shit. Yeah, like that. It's a website. Like it's a literal anonymous website. <laughs> Am I gonna lose sleep over that? No. 
and also it's like tied to a fucking uh, pedal company. You know what's funny about this whole thing? You would have thought Yuri learned his lesson after the whole viral video of him freaking out because he saw a video of his girlfriend from when she was fucking high school that he didn't know about with some obvious gay guy and one of her friends. You would have thought that would have been the time where he's like, you know what, I woke up. And you also would have thought Riley would have been embarrassed for all her family, for her friends, for everybody back home, wherever she's from, to have seen how her boyfriend reacted to her and obviously they're arguing on screen. You would have thought that would have been the inflection point. But that just shows you how toxic they are. Even that embarrassing super viral moment hasn't stopped the abuse, hasn't stopped the arguments, hasn't stopped the fucking friction, the whatever, the, the, the nonsense we see on camera hasn't stopped it at all. It's just the same. It just died down, but then it just carried on. Fucking, what's his name? Moist Critical made a video about them. I think it's probably got over a million views now. Charlie spoke about it, one of the biggest YouTubers and one of the people that everyone kind of goes to for those type of like commentary reaction type videos. He spoke about them, spoke about Yuri, completely rinsed Yuri. You'd think he'd kind of be like, okay, cool. Nah, he's still a cunt. Full of like <clears throat> weirdness and fucking fucking over their employees, fucking over their friends. It's just like, it's it's tied to like a bunch of negative dark shit. And the fact that people still fuck with it is crazy. It's baffling to me. Really, dude. Anyway, so Yuri and Riley are still going strong. Riley's saying, "Don't DM her, leave her alone. If she wants to be in a toxic relationship, let her be in one." And I think the public should have should acquiesce. I think the public should acquiesce. She said, "Leave me the fuck alone." She says, "Leave me the fuck alone." So, leave her alone. Leave her alone. If they want to be like that, if they want to treat people like that are generally concerned for them and tell them to go fuck themselves, then I say leave them alone and let it play out how it plays out. That's what I say. Let it play out how it plays out. And if it ends in tears, if it ends in RIPs, if it ends in airbrush t-shirts, if it ends in GoFundMes, it is what it is. I have absolutely zero sympathy. Absolutely none. Anyway, continuing on from that one. Um, Yuri also decided to have a beef now with Lush and No Jumper. Now Yuri is finally beefing with a man and not just beefing with his girl all the time. He's decided to pluck up some courage and send some disses towards No Jumper and Lush, the recently rehired Lush. So here's Yuri going at them. <clears throat> they make good into no, they don't actually. Shit's terrible. They're 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 like they're like uh, grasping at straws for he who even is uh, left that's willing to go to that platform. There's not a lot of people. A lot of people are like not fucking with it no more. It it's crazy that after that ten talks, uh, Lush is now their new uh, no jumper host. Oh yeah, let's see how Adam fucks over Lush this time. Hundred percent. I knew it. Happen. As soon as we did that phone call with him, <laughs> yeah, you, I was you like, could you could tell Adam, Adam Adam manipulated okay. Lush already. You could tell. That's fucked up, bro. It is what it is. I knew, I was, I was like, bro, at this point, just fucking hang up. I would expect Lush to be more intelligent. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. More intelligent than you, you fucking Flush. donut. <laughs> He's calling him Flush now. Okay, cool. Nice. Oh, would love to smash that glass over his head. No, but um, just another one, right? The Lush thing... I kind of agree with them a little bit. It is a bit pathetic that Lush went back to No Jumper, especially considering the stuff that Adam Twenty-Two said about him. But Lush is also somebody that needs a job. He 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 can't do the content thing on his own. He kind of needs to be in a in a club, in a team, in an organization, on a platform already to done. And let's be fair too. He's also a good fit for No Jumper. He's a bit of a mess, but he knows his shit when it comes about hip hop. He's good with the banter. He plays the he can play the role of like a host on the show really well. He's not gonna get too big for his britches and think he's gonna create a new media empire. He fits their platform really well. I'm not gonna lie. So as much as it's a bit lame that he's back there, considering the back and forth with him and Adam, I get it. I get it. I understand why. Um and if he's grown up enough to put that that static to one side and get back there, what what's the big deal? It's not a big deal. Whatever. Let him move on. But the fact that Yuri's coming at him and calling him unintelligent is hilarious. Like, imagine Yuri of all people calling you unintelligent. That's that's one of the greatest insults you could ever achieve. So Lush also heard that and Lush replied. Lush also clapped back. So we, now we have a beef brewing. 
between um, Yuri and Lush now. So I'm eager to see Wagwan because, you know, you couldn't get a funnier beef if you tried. But this is Lush replying back to Yuri on the No Jumper show. Talking about the Russian freak too? Many things. Uh, if you want, yeah. I don't, I don't care. It's a matter of like, we can. <laughs> it's just funny seeing him try to get that narrative off. <laughs> yeah, because like, th that's... All right, I, I mean, we could definitely address it. So, get, so obviously, Lush understands while guam they're gonna go back and forth it's gonna end up being a bit of a beef another new narrative it seems like these guys and joe I, I, i'm gonna be honest and say this like i don't really like drama like between podcasters i think it's lame but i can't lie i'm kind of gripped by this shit these guys don't really talk about anything and most of the stuff that people know them for is beefing amongst each other like the old hosts, the A A D T Rail, Mac, not Mac Wapla, do know all those guys and these guys now. It's just con it's like a reality TV show a little bit. It's quite entertaining. I'm not gonna lie, it's quite ent I hate beef, but it's quite entertaining. I'm not gonna lie. There's something about it you can't keep your eyes off. And the the LA side of thing is an interesting thing. I find the LA guys, the ones who live in LA, the content creators, especially even the, the gangbangers, they're incredibly messy. They are super messy, like surprisingly so. Very, very, very messy. And I think it's a, it must be a byproduct of being in LA or being in Hollywood or being adjacent to Hollywood, like that kind of always in drama shit. They don't really talk about anything. They don't really have interesting hot takes on cultural topics. It's just internal beef, squabbling. You didn't do this. You didn't pay me. You didn't book me. Where was, you didn't come to my show. You didn't answer my phone call. It's not, they never have really interesting opinions that people care about concerning like hip hop or concerning some cultural thing that happened. It's always just like internal beef shit. It's very interesting, man, how it all works out. But hey, what do I know? Um, Case of Moses, 80% of No Jumper is in office beef, exactly. Um, big up Angel Ranger, perfect hot take. Nah, I'm, I'm not perfect, I'm less than perfect. Look at what I'm wearing, bro. Look at what I'm wearing. <laughs> He's trying these back other hosts already, part of 822. Um, Z said, oversharing, crackhead. I remember that guy. <laughs> I love Lush because there's some of us who have the benefit of like doing drugs and it's not obvious. But Lush has the unfortunate dis d d deposition? disposition where he looks clearly like he's on stuff. He's unfortunate in that regard. It's unfortunate. Some of us can look at... I think I definitely have a very obvious high face and drunk face. I think Lush just looks like he's slept in the ashtray, like he's done a million lines, maybe some pills. Like he looks fucked up. Like You can tell the difference of Lush on stuff and Lush when he was sober and he was on No Jumper before. That's the unfortunate thing about him. You know, he seems to be okay. But I also, I love the fact that Lush is like a perfect example of like how hard it must be if you're a parent of a kid, especially a white white parent of a white kid that's into hip-hop. Because Lush's brother is a CEO of Indeed. And then Lush turned out like this. Imagine, you're Lush parents. You gave both those kids everything. You took them to a private, you put them in a private school, right? You made their life fucking amazing. And then one person is a CEO of Indeed and the other person is you know, pretending to be some, like, hip-hop guy. Like, it's like, what? <laughs> and there's nothing you can do as a parent. There's nothing you can do. What can you do? What can you do? What can you do to prevent one of your sons ending up like this? Yes, yeah, Lush's brother, yes. I thought you guys knew. It's part of the law. Lush, sorry, Lush, brother, CEO, indeed. There we go. That's Lush's brother, him. This guy here. Oh, is that his name? That's his name. Chris Hy Hyams. Chris Hyams is the Chief Executive Officer and CEO of Board of Directors of Indeed. Chris joined Indeed in 2001 as VP of Product, responsible for technology, strategy, and innovation. <laughs> so Lush's brother is like a legit badass, like a legit businessman, like a legit businessman. He's got an article on fucking Fortune magazine. He's... <laughs> like you know what i mean like that's literally lush's brother so imagine if you're lush's parents you did nothing wrong because you raised one kid to be a fucking killer a business shark to the point where he went all the way up 
I'd love. I wish I could see his actual, you know, his actual page, because I want to see what he's had, how he got there. Let's see if I can see that. LinkedIn's a bit weird. Ah, oh, see, yeah, I can't see it. Annoying. Um, but regardless, he seems to be a badass. He's got an article on fucking Indeed and shit, and Lush is out here, you know, hanging out with Adam Sixteen and Brick Baby. <laughs> <sighs> being a parent is must be one of the hardest jobs in the world like comedians say comedy is the hardest job in the world but being a parent must be super hard especially a parent with like means you put your kids in private school you give them a trust fund you move to a nice area suburb you do all the things to give your kid a good start in life and then one of them just ends up hanging out with like you know a crip and a, an alleged pdf <laughs> Oh, you can't win. You can't win as a parent. Like, what the fuck more can you do? <laughs> anyway, let's move on.